had spoken earlier in his life and in fact seemed quite normal back then, with the exception of being close to seven feet tall, Jesus. He had been raised in the deep south and joined the military when he was 19, but when 90 vanished and he was declared AWOL, and eventually he was declared missing and dead. sister because he hit her with something and when he woke up later that night he had a horrible 
patients in multiple places until he passed away. We haven't seen it since. After my parents' divorce, when I was a teenager, I lived with my mother. I experienced lots of paranormal happenings. Several times when I was reading in my bed, the room would start to feel really icy. Next, it would feel as if something or somebody that hated me was staring at me. When I got that feeling, I would leave the room and come back an hour later. Sometimes during the day, I would see a shadow figure sneaking along my bedroom walls. Something in the flat was pretending to be my dog. I got chills. I went into my room and heard a deep growl from under my bed. My dog wasn't capable of making that deep noise. It sounded like either a really big dog or a man doing his best dog impression. Other times, my dog would whimper and pace in the room next to mine, but wouldn't come when cold, as if he was afraid of something in the hallway. When I moved in with my father, the paranormal activity stopped. That reminds me of this time in my old apartment in high school. I was separated off from everybody, like you would walk into my apartment, here's the kitchen, here's a hallway to my parents' bedroom and the guest bedroom, and then you'd walk out of that hallway and go down, here's a ginormous family room, and past that family room would be my room and my bathroom. So one night I wake up at like 3 a.m., and I'm super thirsty, so I get up to go get some water from the kitchen, and as I'm walking in the family room, I hear a growling, like a deep, 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 deep growl. And at the time we had Husky, our, my childhood dog was Husky and her name was Snowy. And I assumed it was Snowy until I looked down. It looks like her, but it, she has piercing red eyes. And Snowy doesn't growl at anybody unless you're trying to take her food away. So, like, that's not her. I was half asleep too, but I remember, like, looking at it and being like, what? And I just decided to go back to bed, I think. I was like, I'm not walking by, whatever the fuck I'm... I'm not dealing with this right now. I'll just drink my spit or drink some tap water. Okay, okay. The next story says, shortly after college, I got married. We immediately moved into a basement apartment because that's all that was available within our budget. This place had a poltergeist and my wife was terrified. Whatever resided there with us made it clear it wanted to live alone. Dishes glasses and other items would fly off the shelf. My wife was hit several times. There was always an ominous feeling like we were being watched. At night, when we walked through the apartment in the dark, there would be insanely bright flashes of light that would illuminate the entire room. One night, while we were going to bed, as soon as my wife and I walked into the bedroom, we heard a voice from nowhere say, my name. said loudly, you've got it, bud. We moved out two, 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 two days later and stayed with family. The old lady who owned the place died a few months later and the house was torn down. It's still an empty lot to this day. Nothing but grass and a tree. I still drive by it every now and then. The next, next, next story. The next. his 
seriously, it's real. Somebody else just validated you. <laughs> Talk about it. I worked, worked, worked as a forensic nurse in the hospital's lockup unit. We had one older lady who swore she was being hunted and abused by a demon called Tiberius or Tiberius. I'm gonna call him Tiberius so it's less scary. So many crazy things happened while she was on the unit. We'd go to our room and do normal care and seconds later she'd start screaming bloody murder. We'd run into the room to find her looking like she'd been in a fight with a boxing champ. Bloody lip, black eye, markings all over her body. No one ever saw her doing this stuff to herself. Things would also get moved around the room by themselves. At one point, she was even in protective restraints because the doctor thought she was hurting herself. There was no way she could have moved or done anything to herself while in restraints, but new marks would always appear, or her tray and or card would be across the room. The room was secure, so there was no way someone else was doing this. When we asked her questions, she would always just say, it was Dipperous. After she was discharged, we always had trouble with that room. If there was going to be a rapid response or code, it happened in that room. One night, a card reported, lights blinking on and off that room. I was home alone when my parents were out of town. We had just moved into our house, so there was an empty lot next to our house with a house half built. My parents were the types to leave the outside garage door unlocked. Dumbasses, I know. Well, I'm happy I didn't have to say it. While they were gone, I was watching TV, and all of a sudden, the door that leads into the garage from the inside starts to wiggle. And I listen again. I see it actually moves that time. I start freaking out and I'm kind of in shock looking for the phone and can't remember the house phone. So I search for myself or I can't find the house phone. So I search for myself and I remembered I left it. Remembered I left my charger in my parents' car. So I'm frantically looking for the house phone. Our house was so new. My mom hadn't even put blinds or drapes in the kitchen or living room. Well, Whoever was wiggling the garage door knob starts banging on the window in the living room. Again, no blinds or phone. And at that moment, I realized this guy is seeing my every move, so I shot upstairs. Again, looking frantically for the phone and also trying to figure out how and where I'd jump out of my house to get away from a maniac. If I needed to, he then starts pounding on the front door. I can tell at that point he's using something metal or plastic by the sound of the thumps. I really thought he was going to shoot my door open. I remember at that moment I was pissed at myself for being a dumbass teenager that frequently talked on the phone because I always just left it lying around, never putting it back on the base. I wanted so badly to push the button that detects where my house phone is, but I thought if he heard where it was, he'd break the window nearest to it and take it. I then remembered I left my phone in my mom's room, and as I passed all the way to her room, I see in front of my house. I'm freaking out and I'm trying to find my dad's gun in my parents' bedroom. I find the phone and I call 911. As I'm on the phone, the window breaks. I'm upstairs and I'm scared to death. Suddenly everything goes silent. I'm waiting in my parents' pitch black closet for what seems like an eternity. And then I hear sirens. Cops show up, but there's no one to be found. I figured that they hadn't gone too far since it had just occurred. Never found my tormentors. On the plus side, the company building the house next door, same company that built ours, hired overnight to security to stay on our street until the houses were built, which was definitely refreshing. Once I was sitting in my room at like 11:30 p.m. and heard lots of shit downstairs. Assumed it was my mom. I heard her walk up the stairs to my room. Stop. I called out to her. She didn't say anything. I went down about half an hour later to find a piece of paper with words, you're lucky I'm scared too, on it, and a whole bunch of shit was missing. I called my mom and she still hadn't arrived home from a dinner she was having with her friends. I called the cops and locked myself in the bathroom, but I think they left when they realized I was still home. Probably the most scared I've ever been when I was hiding in the bathroom. That's so horrible. Oh my gosh. I think this next one will be the last one, guys. Here we go. I 